So to be honest, this is already turning kind of into a big old mess. I've been trying to film now for a couple minutes and the dogs are barking, the cats are getting in my way, but whatever. So welcome to episode two of the Honeybee Chronicles. My name is Rafa. You can find me on Ravelry at Rafa Peterson. You can find me at Instagram <laughs> as the Honeybee Chronicles or Honeybee Chronicles, I think. I'll list it all on the screen. Um, you can find me on... That's it, actually. So, yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in so much. Um, the interaction that I got last time was amazing. It may not have been on YouTube, but I got an amazing Ravelry message, which I will get to a little bit later, and it made me so happy. And um, I got a lot of Facebook comments from friends and family, so I definitely appreciate all the support. I'm trying something a little bit different. Here we're going to be filming on my digital camera instead of the iPad. I think the quality will be a lot better. It may be a little bit spotty in terms of how I do it and everything, but we'll figure it out. So without further ado, I have notes, so you may see me looking down. I wrote out some stuff I wanted to talk about. Um, so if you see that, don't worry. But I'm going to start with my finished object. I have one. I'm so excited. This one, of course, was not one of the works in progress I showed last week, because why would it be? Um, a person I follow on Instagram, the wool company or the wool co she posted a new hat and I actually wrote her to make sure I was uh, pronouncing the name, right? It's the Flace and say hat. Um, it's a German word I'm assuming. And I have an aunt who's German, but I forgot to ask her what it meant, but this is the hat. Oh, that texture is everything. So you can see it's like two patterns. Um, it's sets of three repeats. I won't give much more away about it. It's a lot of left and right twists, which I hate left twists. I learned in the project. Um, it's not super big. I don't like super slouchy hats for the most part. So I decided to go with something a little bit smaller, but I'll show you on. It still covers. There's not a lot of slouch. There's a little bit. Um, I love this hat. And I knit it in... A yarn that I got a while ago, it's um, Madeline Tosh. I want to say it's the 80-10-10 mix, and this is in favorite pair. I had knit another hat in this exact yarn. Um, it was an Andrea Maori pattern, um, but it decided to go into the wash, and I decided I didn't know how to weave in ends, so it died. <laughs> so I, um, it didn't die completely, just like the top crown part got ruined. So I undid it and decided to use it for this. So I love it. Oh, I'm obsessed with it. I think it is so, so pretty and tri twisted rib, pain in the butt, but gorgeous. I modified the pattern. I didn't make, um, she calls for double the amount of, um, rib rows than I did, but I decided to go for a little bit shorter because I don't really want, I'm, I mean, I'm never anywhere where it's like Antarctic cold, like Germany. So I don't really want like a folded rib, you know, looks cute, but I'm happy with what I did. So yeah. So that is my finished object for the week. I'm very, very excited about it. Of course, I didn't finish the sweaters, either of them, of course. Um, I actually didn't even work on Timberline, which is the cabled sweater, but yeah. So that's my finished object. Now I'll go into my only work in progress. This, well, no, I'm lying. I have two. One of them I didn't talk about last week. The other one I did. Because actually I have two I didn't talk about last week that I forgot about. Then one other one. So we'll go over those. Um, but first, the sweater. So I won my initial battle with Stockinette. I'm really happy about that. Very proud of myself. Um, but here is where we're at now. So the entire body is done. I did the ribbing yesterday and like Friday, I think I started it. Um, I bound off. I did the, um, you'll hear Libby playing with the thing. Libs, stop it. Libby. Hey, hey, no. Sorry. Um, I did the, I want to say the Julie surprisingly stretchy. Uh, or Jen, someone's surprisingly stretchy bind off. I like it a lot. I think it's interesting because the yarn color changed for it. So I think that looks kind of cool, but I like it. I think it looks pretty. My mom will love it. She's already seen pictures of it. Um, now I'm on the sleeves. On the first sleeve, so you do a certain amount of garter and then it's, the rest of it is um, stockinette. Again, my favorite. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, so I'm hoping to finish this sleeve either today or tomorrow, and then do the other sleeve. Lord willing, this will be a finished object next week because my test net's almost due and stuff, and I want to give it to my mom already, so yeah. I'm going to get this off my lap because it's hot, so hold on one second. Okay, so now on to my next work in progress. I guess I'll talk about this. This is what was holding the one I wanted to talk about first, but I'll show the bag anyway. This is from um, The Little Skein or The Little Skein. I think the pattern is so pretty. It's called like Yarn Bomb, so you can see like all the yarn all over everything. It's cute. Um, the Little Skein in The Big Wool, that's what it's called. Um, so in here lies a mess that I need to finish and work on. Um, <laughs> you can see how much of a mess it is. This is the beginning of the, jo the Jelly Roll socks. Um, this is my first time knitting anything two at a time, so it's a little bit of a mess, I think, and I'm not, I don't know. But I plan on finishing it. This is a Hedgehog Fibers yarn that I think is so pretty. It has very subtle, beautiful, um, I wish it would focus. Focus right here, please. Um, maybe? Let me see if I do the Beauty Guru trick. There you go. So it has some really, really pretty speckling in different colors, darker colors, whatever. And then I'm going to go into Monet by Hedgehog Fibers, which I don't have with me, but I'm sure everyone's seen it. It's a very, very pretty color. So, yeah, so there's that. But I put it in this bag because I just did. I probably should have put it in a different bag, but whatever. So this Noah made for me a while ago, this current project. Oh, he's so naive that this would be all that I would have for current projects, but... This is the Marley Shawl by Andrea Mowry. So it's a brioche shawl. This is the right side, and this is the wrong side. I like the wrong side better, of course, but... <sighs> I've been working on this slowly since June, very, very slowly. Like, I worked on... I did maybe, like, a row or, like, a repeat in July, maybe, and that's it. That's all I've worked on it. Um, so this yarn is... This one is Boombox or Genie. It's one or the other by Hedgehog Fibers. It looks like this. I think this color is so pretty. And then the other yarn, I don't remember what it is, but it's not, it's Madeline Tosh. I don't remember the name of the colorway. I'll put it in the down bar if I remember to, or in the photo, sort of video, whatever. So you can hear Belle. Um... So yeah, it's a really pretty like gray with like some blue and some brown. In here, I just see gray, if you can see. But I'm kind of at a loss. I don't know how I feel about these two colors together for the whole thing. I have enough yarn to do it. It takes two skeins, supposedly. Um, I'm sorry, I keep looking up. I have a little viewfinder up there. Anyway, um, so it takes two skeins of each yarn. I'm thinking about, because there was like a comment in the pattern saying like stripe it how you fancy or whatever. I was thinking about going for another section in this, which I love. This is by Madeline Tosh. It's the same um, base as the other one. And it is, I had it right here, maybe. Where did you go? Here it is. It is the... Tosh Marina Light in this color. Costo, I think. It's funny because I have another one that I thought was the same. And then I looked at it and it's a different color. Same base and everything. But it is this one. Which to me looks like exactly the same. And it's Nebula. I think this is so pretty. But I think I'll use, I'm thinking about doing like a stripe, like the next section in that color and then the third section in a, a different color. So making it like a three stripe shawl and then using just the same hedgehog fibers though for this color. I don't know. I was thinking about that today actually. But it's a very mindless knit. Honestly, like I know I hear a lot about brioche being really hard and stuff. It's practice, but once you figure it out, there's like an aha moment that I had really quickly working on the range shawl by Andrea Mowry. You can tell I like her patterns a lot. Um, and it just clicked. And so it's really mindless. It's the same four rows over and over and over again. And then you do the garter stitch border, which I haven't gotten to yet, obviously. But it's very, very stretchy and squishy. And I love it. I think this, I really want to have this done for Japan. 
because I think like walking around in like Harajuku would be so fun with this. But you can see I don't even have my needles in because I use them for the hat. Oh, I'm such a mess. But yeah, so I really want to finish this soon. So yeah, those are my works in progress and let's move on. Okay, I'm back. Um, that was a little bit of an intermission. I closed the door, let the dogs out, a whole bunch of stuff. So my next section is going to be at, well, I guess I'm going to do an answer anything thing because I got a question. And let me just tell you, Karen, I am so thankful for your question. I got up yesterday and I was hanging out, whatever, and I looked at my phone and on the stash to go, I think app, I had a little notification. I was like, hmm, what is it? So I checked and it was you and I was like, oh, and I was sitting next to no one. I showed him and he was like, I'm so proud of you. So it meant so much to me. Thank you so much. Um, so Karen, which her username on Ravelry is Quilt Baker. Um, she asked a few questions and so I figured I would answer some of them. Hopefully this will help, whatever. Um, so the first thing I want to say thank you for your input on the Timberline sweater. I really needed that like little encouragement because I've been just sitting there thinking like, ah, oh, should I frog it back and just do a stock in its sleeve and then have the rest be, um, the cables. But I think I agree with you. I think that the more cables, the merrier, and maybe later I'll make another of the same sweater with just the stock in its sleeves and have both options. Who knows? You never know. Uh, so yeah. So the first question that you had was where did I come up with the name for the Honeybee Chronicles? So part of it's going to be really cheesy, but whatever. Um, Noah and I, we've always referred to each other as honey. We don't like babe or baby or any of that. It's just not our personal preference for each other. It's honey. Um, so honey, honey bee. And originally about a year ago, maybe a little bit more, Noah and I got really into traveler's notebooks and building them and, or constructing them and playing around with them and stuff. And if you guys ever want to hear more about my traveler's notebook, here's just like a quick preview of mine, one that I use every day. Um, it has my name on it on the bottom. It's cute. If you can see it. Um, we decided that we were going to do a blog and we were going to talk about the notebooks. We were going to talk about any, um, any DIYs that we did. That's the word I was looking for because Noah's very handy. He actually built the desk that we're filming on right now, um, which I can show later if you guys want to see. Um, but we were doing a lot of DIYs, especially before we moved into our new house. Um, and so we were going to do a blog and everything and I needed to come up with a name and I decided the Honeybee Chronicles because it would kind of chronicle our adventures, which the description on my Instagram and I think the description on my YouTube, which I still need to do like the cover photo and like fill it out and stuff, the profile, um, they are, they say like documenting my misadventures through knitting, crafting, DIY, whatever. And originally it was ours and we were going to share the Instagram and we were going to, um, maybe do videos eventually, but for sure we were going to do, um, like a blog. I still own the domain name, the honeybeechronicles.com. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. If anything, I'm not a big DIYer. I'm way, way, way too clumsy for it, but Noah still is very into it. So we'll see. Um, but really, like I said, in my last podcast, I was so inspired by all the podcasters that I've seen. Like lately, I've really been watching Inside 23, Katie. I love her and Legacy Knits. Those are the two that I've been like hardcore watching. I'm obsessed with Legacy Knits because it reminds me a lot of the relationship with my mom and I, but my mom's just a bit more sarcastic. <laughs> um, but I love the podcasting community. And so I decided that I really wanted to be a part of it. Already had that name, decided, you know what, let's go for it. And lucky enough, Noah is starting to get into knitting. Um, he's been working on this one swatch, which I would love to show you. Um, maybe I'll grab it actually. Hold on one second and I'll show it to you guys. Okay, I'm back. So this is Noah's project. I gave him a project bag that I got from MadelineTosh.com. Um, it's a, by the brand Bagu. Here's the thing is that I ordered it. I think I love the pattern. I think it's cute. It has like goats on it. I think they're goats. I want to say they're goats. Um, but it says that it could fit a men's sweater. That's a lie. You can't fit anything in this thing. Anything big. But anyway, so... <laughs> This is Noah's project. I'll get back to the question in a second. But he is just 
using his skein of yarn that he has. He bought it, I believe, at either Hobby Lobby or Joanne's a while ago. I was supposed to make him a blanket with it, but never got to it. Um, and he's just doing stockinette straight down until he finishes the ball of yarn. Um, our complaint about the yarn is that it gets everywhere. It's cotton. I think I said that already, though. Um, but it gets everywhere. But one thing that Karen asked me was about Portuguese-style knitting, which I'm going to go a little bit more in-depth on in a second. But this is Noah's... I think he frogged it twice, maybe? So it's it's very, very, like, his new knitting. But look at the tension on this. And, I mean, he's amazing at, like, spinning. He was really good at knitting. He's good at, if you can tell. He's not the fastest, but he's very good. Like, the tension is just perfect to me. Like, oh, uh, if my tension was like this on my first skein of yarn, who knows where we'd be now. But, anyway, so yeah, so that's his project. So he has been working on something. So there's his work in project, or work in progress. Um, but back to the name. So yeah, so that's where I, that's where I'm kind of going with it. I would love for him to be my co-host on the Honeybee Chronicles. I think that would be really fun. He's scared of the camera, I think, shy with the camera, I know, um, but I really think he should do it, so hopefully, with enough encouragement, he'll do it. So, yeah, so back to the Portuguese style knitting. So, Karen was saying that in her thought, or what she knew of Portuguese knitting, you needed different needles. It's not true. I use, um, Addy Turbos and a Haya Haya Sharp interchangeable sets for pretty much all of my knitting. Um, the, what you need, the tool, I guess, that you would use is something like this. So this, let me see if it'll focus. Hi, focus, thanks. Um, this is a Portuguese knitting pin. I bought it on Amazon for like $6 for two. Um, so it has the little hook on it. You can use something like this. I bought these at Michael's, like in a big pack, and I don't know where the bag is, but like this. This works just as well. So it just like clips on your shirt. Um, Noah liked it better because he was pulling on his other shirt and making holes. There's, they also sell necklaces. Or like the traditional way to do it is basically to put it around your neck. So, actually, give me one second. I want to work on the Marley shawl. So let me get it ready and I'll show you guys. So you can see I pinned the um, pin on my shirt. You want to pin it up here. I pin it pretty high. Other people pin it a little bit lower. Um, if you're going to use a pin... What you do is you pin it, obviously. And then you would put whatever working yarn... Ugh. <laughs> I hate when yarn tangles. And that's the only thing about two-color brioche is that it tangles up like crazy. Anyway. Um, so you hang it from your shirt. And it goes like this, right? So you can kind of see. So the way that you would do it is... You hold your yarn, which I'll, if you guys want, let me know, and I can do, like, a series of tutorials on, like, basic Portuguese knitting. Um, but I'm going to do a little bit of purling, actually, so, you know, it's obviously facing back, but let me just do this really quick. Um, so, all you do is you just flick the yarn around, which is why I think it goes so quick. Um, especially for purling, you're literally just flicking. So, and it's the same thing for knitting just backwards. Again, I can show you guys later if you guys really want. Um, but that's like the, I, to me, that's the, what makes, oh, well, and then you don't want to do that. Gosh. Um, uh, <laughs> that's what, that's what makes uh, Portuguese style knitting so much quicker is that there's not as much hand movement. I guess, is the big thing, as I'm, like, splitting every stitch in the history of the world, whatever. Um, so, yeah, the traditional way to do Portuguese knitting, however, and you want to put your pin on the side, like, your dominant side, um, but what you can do is do, like, this. That's the traditional, is around your neck. I don't like how it feels, but that's what you do. So, that is... And the thing about Portuguese knitting, I think, like, my favorite thing about it is that when you do it, your tension is always on point. And I think, like, for me, when I when I try to throw, because I can't, it's funny, I'm left-handed, but I can't do continental to save my life. It There's something about the tensioning in my left hand that just does not work for me. Um, and I really, really still would love to learn how to do it, and I'd love to be faster at throwing. I do, when I do, um, 
knit with not with an without a needle i do like flicking i guess is what they call it um like hold it and like flick it over the the needle the yarn but it's not like a everyday thing for me at all um i prefer uh portuguese style knitting really because it's a lot for me it's a lot quicker i know that the product that i'm going to end up with is going to be a lot better in terms of like what i how i like my knitting to look if that makes sense so yeah that's portuguese style knitting and then brioching it's funny because i really really wanted to learn how to brioche <clears throat> Because when I really picked up knitting again, it was almost, I want to say it was like last November, December was when I started like really like getting back into it. And um, everyone was brioching everything. You brioched all the things, as they say. And I loved it, but I didn't understand how to do it from a from Portuguese knitting style. Because I, um, when I started knitting again, I should probably just go into this. When I started knitting again, I started with um i started looking at craftsy videos i love craftsy and i found knit faster with portuguese knitting and i had heard about portuguese knitting prior um but it was like these like really expensive books or you know whatever and i believe the portuguese knitting class was on sale when i started in january so i was like okay let's jump into it let's try it and i bought that and continental knitting continental knitting nope I, I realized again, nope, still can't do it. It's not going to happen. Um, but I started doing that. But I guess I, at first, obviously, you it takes a while to understand how yarn works and how the process is with knitting and what you're doing and all of that stuff. Um, and so I struggled with figuring out how to do a lot of things, like brioche and some cabling and purling was, was hard. It was... It's easier than regular purling because you're not moving your finger in and out and around and stuff. Um, but it still is, it takes trust. You have to trust that you're going to flip the yarn to the right spot for it to go through. It's very, very easy once you get it, but you have to literally trust in the system and that it'll work. So it took me a while, but I figured it out. And with brioching, yarn overs, are there different how they were worked in brioche or in Portuguese style knitting the way I was taught and I was taught by Andrea Wong online obviously not in person be fun but the way she teaches it and the way I do it ended up being two very different things because I found a way that worked better for me and that's I think the thing in all knitting is that if what you're doing works well keep doing it if you're really really good at throwing keep throwing even if you're not the fastest but you like how your product looks do it because it's worth it. If continental is your thing, good for you. Like, I wish it was my thing too. I honestly do because while I love Portuguese style knitting, it's a pain to have to take a pin, have to pin it into my shirt or wear a necklace that is very uncomfortable for me or um, wear it around my neck, which I hate the feeling of. So it's an extra step. I can't just pick up knitting in a random moment with, with uh, Portuguese style knitting. However, I work faster in it and I like the product better. So it's just a balance and figuring out what works best for you. Um, and for Noah, yes, I did teach him Portuguese sound leading. I think I mentioned that, but I had tried before to teach him throwing. Tensioning the yarn is so much more complicated for me in throwing and in continental than it is in Portuguese style. Um, and so I could never figure out how to teach him. And it took him three or four lessons with me and lessons were like five, 10, 15 minutes. Um, for it to click because he'd get really anxious and really overwhelmed because you don't get how the yarn can go around the thing and not hook in and pull through. But once he did, it clicked and he's like, okay, I got this. And so now he's slowly, keyword slowly, getting into knitting. Um, I bought him a couple of skeins of yarn, of nice yarn, because we bought cheaper yarn. Because I think everyone starts with cheaper yarn unless you're like, you know that you're going to love knitting from the beginning, but you start with a $4 skein from uh, Michael's or from Hobby Lobby, Joann's, wherever store you have near you. Um, and then if you really love it and you research it and you learn about the community and everything, then you learn about better yarns and you realize that spending $30 on a skein isn't crazy and it's not the worst thing in the world, even though for some people it may be, and they may love their Red Heart or um, Vanna's Choice or whatever those yarns are, you know, but I think he started learning from me how 
beautiful some of the more luxury yarn can be and so he decided to jump on board too so i'm trying i really really want to get him into knitting as passionately as i am just because the social aspect of knitting i think is very lost in me um the only time i've ever had really experiences with that and i think i talked about this last time um has been like at yarn um not at yarn at family gatherings with my aunt who she crochets but her and I will sit at the table, everyone else will sit around, and we'll all be talking, and she'll be crocheting, I'll be knitting. Neither of us feel like we're being rude by not talking in the, con you know, having conversations. But that's, like, the extent of it. And, like, in my family growing up, I'm Mexican-American, um, culturally very, very Mexican, less of the American side, um, which I'm very happy about, or not happy about, but I'm okay with. I love, I love who I am, I love who where I come from, I love who I come from, you know, etc. Um, <coughs> I, in my family, my great aunts, my nana's uh, sisters, they would do a lot of crocheting. And they, like, I had one, um, it was my tata, which is my grandfather, his sister, half-sister, stepsister, or something, um, she made me an afghan, she crocheted me an afghan, and I still have it, and I love it, and it's the most comfortable thing in the world. Um... So in the culture, it's normal for the women to be knitting or crocheting, more crocheting in my family, but, you know, to be to be working on something while sitting and talking. So when I do it, I don't feel like I'm being impolite because I'm still listening and I actually pay better attention if I'm doing something, which I'm sure pretty much every knitter would agree with. Um, so, yeah, it was a, you know, it's a process and it was, and it's fun. And I love that aspect of it because I love sitting around talking, hearing what's going on with people, etc., but I don't get to participate in it as much at home or, you know, everywhere else. But, yeah. So, there's that. And let's see what else I had on here. Oh, Rib Magazine. Yes, Karen, I cannot wait for it to come out. I am so excited about it. I've watched a couple of Eric Six Plus Twine podcasts. Not too many. Um, the other, um, his co-creator, I haven't looked into at all. I probably should. Um... Nor have I looked into the podcast that you mentioned you were watching. I want to say it was Dog Dare or Duck Dare or something. Let me see. I can pull it up really quick. Um, but I have not watched that or heard of it before, so I really want to look into it too. It was Dog Dare. Yeah, I've never heard of it. Um, but the magazine I am so excited about. And then on Wednesday, August... I don't know what date it is. <laughs> I'm like the worst person for dates. Um, let me see. On August 17th, I think, um, Jared Flood of Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn Tweed, his new book comes out and I am so excited. I love Jared's designs. He's the person who designed Timberline. Um, he designed the braid cap, which I really want to make. I have it in my queue. I've just in awe of his designs and I love how smart his designs are. If that makes sense. So I can't wait to get that book. Um, but Rib Magazine, so excited about. Because it is a very, very big minority of men who knit. And I know that in historical times or whatever, that it was more common for men to knit than it was women, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's daintier, whatever, all the, you know, all the changes that have happened in knitting over the years. But I, I do very much feel like an outsider a lot of times in the knitting community. And so... I think that, like, having that book and having that outlet will help to normalize knitting for men, I hope, and so I'm super excited about it. But that does lead me into something that I wanted to talk about, um, and this is kind of in, like, the random or the blabber section or whatever you want to call it. Um, so yesterday, I decided as a reward to myself for um, having gotten that message, which might sound dumb, but I really want this podcast to grow and I really want like a community from it. And I really want this to be a good outlet for me and for everyone to watch and, you know, interact, etc. So the fact that I got a completely unsolicited question and response, I was so excited about, I was over the moon about. And so I decided I wanted to do some stash enhancement, which I didn't end up doing anyway. I'm very sad about it. Um, so, you know, I was really, really excited. So I decided to drive across town. It was about 30 miles from where I live because I live in Phoenix or in the Phoenix area and Phoenix is huge. So 30 miles is, I guess it's like an average, I want to say, for going across town. Um, so we went, Noah and I went to a knitting store on the other side of town that I wanted to check out for a while. I'm not going to say the name because it's not important. But 
so I've been following them on social media for a while. They have interesting yarns. Supposedly they had Quince and Co. I didn't find any of it because I do want to try that brand. Um, and they had some other stuff that I was curious about touching and seeing, etc. So I get there and there's been two, I want to know, two or three. I want to say three of the yarn stores that I visited in my life, which I mean, I haven't visited that many. So I've been pretty lucky. I want to say, um, where I've come in and I've felt welcomed as soon as they realized that I wasn't there like to buy a present for someone or that I wasn't there to be stupid or whatever. Um, I felt really welcomed and people would help me or they would talk to me about my projects or what I was doing, etc. Well, this place, the woman came up to me, she wasn't rude or anything, but she came up and she said, uh, hello, very like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, oh, hi. And she's like, do you need anything? And I was like, no, I'm good. Because that vibe just right away off put me. I was like, uh, -uh I don't want anything to do with her. So I left and, or I walked around the store. I'm sorry. I walked around the store. I didn't see anything that I really, really wanted. I was looking at the cables for the Addies because I'm out of, I've like lost a couple of my cables, like my 16 inch, which I need for hats or I'd like it for hats. Um, because I can't do, I can't start a project on Magic Loop to save my life, and it's very, very annoying. Um, yeah. So, you know, I was, I tried to look, and she wouldn't move. This, and this was another person who worked there, and she just stood there and like looking at me like, "You have no business being here. Why would I get out of your way?" Maybe I took it too far. Maybe I was being sensitive, but I don't think I was. And Noah felt the ill vibe too. That's what we call ill. Just oh no, like it's not, not for me. And it's very sad because I understand that I may not be your normal demographic. I get that. I may not be as mature in terms of age as your normal clients would be. I may not be the right gender for your normal clients to be, you know, whatever. But I think about it and I don't think that's fair because I was there to shop. If I had gotten good service, who knows? I could have walked out with a few project bags, which I love project bags, as we all know, or some good yarn. But when I felt unwelcome, why am I going to want to spend my money there? You know what I mean? Like, it just didn't feel right. And so it's annoying that that stigma or that that, that idea is so mainstream that men don't knit and that it's a very feminine thing to do, which I get that it can be feminine. I get that a lot of patterns are feminine. I understand that I love a lot of the feminine patterns because they're beautiful and it's something that you can create. But I don't know. I think that, that if you own a yarn store, realize that a lot of different people of a lot of different walks of life are going to come in and spend their money there. And if you're welcoming and accommodating and excited to see them and ask them what they're working on, ask them what their rivalry name is, you know, whatever, then you'll get a good response. But if you're stuck up and you're sticking with one customer when there's four employees there and the only one person's being helped and you're not even being asked, how are you? Just how can I help you? I don't know. It put a bad taste in my mouth. It's interesting because when I went to my favorite yarn store now, and it's in Omaha, Nebraska, which is very, very far from me, but I went um, to visit Noah's family to Nebraska for the first time. Um, we went into this yarn store called Personal Threads Boutique. And it's a very interesting location. It's on the second story of this building that looks like an office building. Um, the first story was this like interesting, I didn't really look around, but it was like a homeware store. Had some, I think, antiques. I could be wrong. But it, had, it was a very like boutique version of Kirkland's, if that makes sense. So a lot of very interesting decorative pieces for your house. Um, you took an elevator on the side up to the personal threads, and then this whole floor was all a yarn store best yarn store I've been to. They have all the yarn that I love. I've said before that Arizona doesn't really carry the kind of yarn that I like. It carries a lot more cotton, which makes sense because it's hot. I get that. Um, and everything very desert themed in my experience. And I'm from here. The novelty of desert has worn off on me. So I don't want that, if that makes sense. I want what I want. And I like bright colors. I like speckles. I like the cool tones. I, you know, everything that I don't really see here. Anyway, not important. Um, so I walked in there and at first the owner who I think it's the owner, if I'm, if, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but if you're watching, Hey, I, you were amazing. Thank you so much for everything. Um, he came up to me and he said, hello, you know, it was me and no, he's like, hello. 
Um, he's like, can I help you guys with anything? And I was like, no, you know, I'm good, whatever. And so I start looking and I start grabbing. And then he realized that I was actually like shopping, that I wasn't just perusing. And he had a conversation with me and he talked to me about, um, the yarn that he sold. He talked to me about that he had just gotten Hedgehog Fibers in, that he'd gotten Madeline Tosh in. Um, he talked to me about some of the other brands that I'd never heard of and how their labeling system worked. And it's one that is on the tip of my tongue and I can't remember what it's called. Um, but it's a very popular brand that they don't name their colors. Everything is by numbers. I'm sure everyone knows what I'm talking about. Everyone who knits anyway. Um, so he was talking to me about that and super excited. And, you know, I spent a lot of money and it's not like, Oh, I have so much money to spend or anything. I was just very excited and very into it and very passionate about what I was buying and everything. And it was just a really, really good, positive shopping experience. And I'm always down to support independent businesses. You know, if I can buy yarn from a yarn store, even if it's a couple more dollars than it would be buying it from the manufacturer directly, why wouldn't I do that to support the economy, right? Like support local economies, even if it's not mine. But, you know, I did that and it was amazing. I had a really good experience with him. We talked about what it was like owning a yarn store, et cetera, et cetera, which is one of my dreams in life is to own a yarn store. I think it'd be really fun to have one. Um, but, you know, so we had a good conversation with that. And this was like the exact opposite. I felt very alienated, felt very outsider, and it just wasn't fun. So I, I just thought that was really interesting. And I thought that was something I wanted to bring up on the podcast because how, you know, what are, what is everyone else's experience has been with yarn, especially if you're a male who knits or a male who wants to knit, a male who crochets, some kind of works with fiber, spinning, whatever you do, needle battling or batting, whatever it's called, sorry, felting, all that stuff. What has been your experience? Because other than that store, I've had either a very normal experience where I felt the same as any other customer who's in the store, or I felt special going in and I loved that. But yeah, so that was my story with yesterday. What did I pick up? I bought nothing there, not out of protest or anything. I just didn't see anything that I fell in love with. Um, but I did go to Joann's and I got like a pair of shears um, for cutting because my high highs are very worn out. Um, another row counter because one can never have enough row counters. And then did I buy anything else? I don't think so. I think those were like my two big like uh, notion-y purchases. Um, big. They weren't big purchases at all, but it was fine. Um, but yeah, and then I came home and, or we went to eat. We were way on the north side of town, um, because we went from there to Joanne's because I really want to pick up sewing. And so I was very impulsive and I was about to buy a sewing machine. I stopped myself because their prices weren't that great. Um, because I own so many freaking project bags that I need to stop buying them and I need to learn to make them myself. I'm at that point where I'm like, okay, I like them that much that I need to figure out how to do it myself. Um, but yeah, so I left there and then we went to eat and then we came home and I just knit, 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 finished the body of the sweater, finished the ribbing and did the bind off, which took a long time that bind off, but I love it. It's to me, it was very much worth it. Then started to sleep and fell asleep. <laughs> and then I woke up this morning, like super excited that I was going to knit and, um, film and you know, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. Oh, one last thing that I realized that I forgot to mention um, from Karen, because she asked another question about the nine inch circulars. So I have used them a couple of times. I've never finished a project on them. I'm trying to this time with the Saturday matinee socks, or I may remove them and do the finish the jelly rolls. We'll see. But what I've learned, or at least in my experience thus far is I cannot cast on directly onto it and knit. I need like two or three rows done on like either a, a 40 inch circular for magic loop or DPNs. Hate DPNs. They're so finicky for me. I want to drop them constantly. They're like poking each other. It's not fun. Probably how I do it, whatever. Um, but so yeah, so I, um, so when I've used the nine inch circulars, what I did was I knit like two or three rounds on the DPN and then I switched and I do like them. Um, it's a lot quicker in terms of you're not having to pull through, you know, how it is when you do like a hat, for example, if you're doing it on a 16 inch circular, you can just keep going in a circle, um, versus the magic loop where you get to half of it, pull through, pull in, do it, whatever. Um, so yeah, so it's, I like it. I don't know if I'd continue doing it because it kind of makes my hands feel like very like 
tiny, which isn't the best feeling. Like, it makes my hands, like, feel like I'm cramping because I'm having to hold so tight. But I'm going to keep trying for sure. And one thing that I was going to ask, um, if anyone has any resources on, it would be much appreciated if you shared. Whenever I cast on on Magic Loop recently, before I used to be fine, have no issues, could work it like nothing. I've rewatched the tutorials that I've seen before, just before I go any further. But every single freaking time that I cast on on Magic Loop now, two things happen. Not one of two. Two things happen. First, it twists. As much as I try my hardest to not twist it, I pull the stitches through and, you know, make sure it's very straight and smooth on both sides. It still twists. Both times, when I get through the first half and when I do the second half, I do the same thing and each time it's still... Uh, uh, uh. Hate it. Um, so if anyone has any resources for that, I'd really, really appreciate it. And the other thing is that that first stitch, regardless of how many, how tight I pull, how many times I pull, how slowly I do it, how quick I do it, I end up with this huge, like, string of yarn that just is annoying as hell. And I don't know if it'll get better as I keep going, because I always end up just giving up and putting it down and going and grabbing, like, my 16-inch circulars if I'm doing a hat or, you know, whatever I can do. But help please is there a way to get rid of that because it's so annoying so anyway i guess i will leave it there thank you guys so much for watching anyone who stuck through the whole video i appreciate you um my next video hopefully will be up in another week or so i'm hoping to get this video up today which is sunday the 14th it's my plan to edit it really quickly and post it last time i had a lot of issues with um uploading because my internet it just didn't want to upload it probably because it was so long this won't be just as long to this that part but my goal is to get this uploaded and film well it's already filmed obviously and then upload it hopefully today if not by wednesday again for sure post it um i want to get on like a semi-regular schedule especially because in what i believe let me see in a couple of weeks in a month month no almost a month I go to Hawaii, and I'm going to Hawaii for 10 days. My plan as of now is to pre-film. Let me see. I have my dates right here. In 32 days. Um, I plan on pre-filming a, um, a podcast or two, and then doing my, well, not or two, a podcast. Um, basically doing my, because I film on Sundays is what I like to do. Um, film it on Wednesday before I leave on Thursday. Um, and hopefully have it uploaded or have it set to upload on Sunday. And then I want to do another, like a vlog of my trip is my goal. My hope is to get that done. Cause I think that'd be really fun and a good way to memorialize my trip. Um, so yeah, I don't know why I'm saying that, but my, my plan is to try to keep focused and stay on filming on Sundays, have it up by Wednesday. That'll be my plan. So, um, yeah, so Thank you guys so much for watching again. Anyone who stuck through the whole video, you the real the MVP, as they say, as the kids say. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess I will talk to you all later. Um, please like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, subscribe if you haven't, because I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, I guess I'll talk to you all later. Have a good one. Bye. Yep, perfect spot. Beautiful. Thank you. Maybe? No.